Hello financial investors and welcome to the channel. My name is Brent and today we're going to be taking a look at the M1 Finance Roth IRA performance of dividends over these past two years and three months. I think this is a great opportunity to take a look at where we started and where we are today. So I started the Roth IRA back in January 2018 and in my first month of investing in the market I generated a whopping zero dollars. Now here we are two years now from that initial point where this portfolio is now generating 50 to 70 dollars on a monthly basis so what we're going to be taking a look is going back to the basics of why we started this account and this is what a lot of other investors should do with their portfolios too if they're a dividend investor starting their dividend journey not too long ago this is something you need to kind of go back take a step back and reflect on how much your dividends have really increased over the past two years even when you were buying into the market at these highs now you have the opportunity to pick and select stocks or buy an etf which is going to be offering you a higher starting yield than where you could have invested here just about a year or two ago and even some instances out there much further back. So with that said, if you are brand new to my channel, I would really appreciate it if you do give me a subscribe to this channel. I talk about stock market, dividends, real estate, personal finance. If you guys do enjoy this video, find it helpful, entertaining, interesting, give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions at all at any time over this video, the stock market or dividends, want to let me know how much your portfolio is generating dividends. I would really appreciate to kind of see where everybody is at. And let's go ahead and get into the video. I've been kind of taking a look here at stock futures. I really haven't been paying too much attention to the market these last few days. I've actually been working from home. And when I work from home, I actually feel like I have to work harder in order to feel like I, you know, make it feel like I you know, I don't know how the, what, the, what the meaning of it is but when you're at work you may slack off a little bit more because you're at work but then when you're at home you're given this opportunity to work from home so I feel like I'm working a bit harder these last few days than I really haven't been checking the stock market during this time so maybe a few of you can understand so anyways uh, kind of going back stock futures have actually been bouncing higher here in the after hours they were kind of sluggish during the day S&P closed up about a half a percent, Dow Jones almost 1%, and the NASDAQ completely disconnected from the other indexes up 2.3%. So technology, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Apple, leaping bounds and bounds ahead. I've actually been looking at entering into position in Google just because it's one of those few tech companies that has not pushed with the rest of the you know facebook amazon apple uh the fang stocks that i've been kind of monitoring but we'll kind of talk about that in another video so it's kind of interesting to kind of see where the market was at now taking a look at the portfolio this is what i kind of want to focus on today not so much the equity up and down because that's going to change regardless and we have a long-term outlook in this portfolio it's not like i can just withdraw you know, sell everything in this account and just withdraw it right away. The Roth IRA is an account that was specifically being used in order to invest equity in into positions. And those positions would grow and pay out dividends, which would allow this account to compound with those dividends, buying back more shares, which would pay more dividends. And the whole process here, I'm 34. I have another 26 years until I can take advantage of the full Roth IRA benefits of the free tax-free dividends getting paid out to my account. So I still have quite a while and I don't need to worry about where the current market's at because the United States is not going anywhere. Uh, a lot of the companies within this account are not going to go anywhere. So we're not going to focus too much on the gains there. What we are going to focus on instead is the dividends and the positions within this account. So I have, I believe... 34 positions we'll take a look here in just a second at all the total positions within this account but this account has been generating dividends since back in january of 20 well actually february of 2018 if we look here at the month of 0 01 0 01 2018 and go 01 31 2018 we made a whopping zero dollars our first month this is when i first started this account back in january 1st 2018 it was actually towards the end of the month so if i look at reset this and let's just look at all the activity i was fairly new to m1 finance and guess what was back in january 18th 
uh, January 2018. The stock market was trading at all-time highs at that time, and when I invested my capital, I had Auto Invest turned on, and that full $5,500 for 2018, oh no, it was focused towards 2017. This initial deposit was focused towards 2017 still because you could still add capital to your Roth IRA up until April 15th for the previous year. So this initial $5,500 was towards 2017. Guess what happened? It invested all $5,500 at market highs here in January. Well, that wasn't so bad because throughout the rest of the year, it uh, could gradually increase and then I was able to deposit for 2018. So I didn't make any dividends my first month. It wasn't until February where I started to get some dividends. So if we go here, and I think that's like the 28th there, because that's not a leap year. Yeah, it goes until 28th. Then my second month on this platform, I generated roughly about $10 and some change. So five, six, eight, uh, let's say 15, 17, 20, twenty dollars and some change so this is just between dividends that had not been paid out in january and were paid out here in february so there's quite a mixture here a couple companies that i no longer own such as the blackstone group and that is the only one there but this continued on for quite a while here in 2018 and into 2019 and we've really tracked the performance here of these companies. Now, I recently updated my live data here. So this is showing everything right now as it is in the market. So the dividends here in this account, all of these positions together are now generating $790.38. So that is actually a really good amount. $800 of just straight dividend income after these past two years of invested in the stock market. Now, we didn't start off with it. We started off back here on January 18th with our initial investment of $5,500. That initial deposit of $5,500 started off our account with $177.89 of just annual income. So that's a big difference there from $5,500 of invested equity only generating us $177.89 to now, if we go back to our current data, we have about $18,000. So we almost have three times the equity, our base investment in the market working for us, but we have almost four times the amount of dividends that we're generating from this account. So the power of compounding has definitely been working in this account and the portfolio here, the way that I generate this yield here. So this yield here is 4.37%. And all I take is my base investment. I don't count my total uh, right here. I don't I don't look at the original cost because I, I have a bunch of dividends that have paid out dividends which have been reinvested and those dividends have paid out more dividends and were reinvested. So my original cost basis for much of my portfolio is going to throw off my total cost, my, my total portfolio yield on its original cost. So what I use here is just my base investment. How much equity I've actually funded into this account. And this is actually just 6,000 here because I pulled $10 and pushed back $10 into the account in order to completely max it out with 6,000. But M1 Finance did not fix that glitch there. So if I go ahead and remember my first year, I put $5,500, that was back towards 2017. They never corrected that either. So this $11,000 is because I made an initial deposit of $5,500 towards 2017. And then I did another $5,500 towards 2018. So we're going to have 11000 plus 6000 plus $1,269.18. So this is our initial, this is how much we've actually deposited into this account. And we get a yield with all of our investment positions and the annual income that is currently generated. That gives our portfolio roughly a 4.37% yield for the amount of equity that we've invested base. Now, what I did here is I went ahead and tracked all the dividends and the performance since when we started this account. So if down here at the bottom, my very first month, I made $0 when I first started this account. Then in February of 2018, that's when we started getting those, you know, AT&T, Apple, Blackstone, uh, Caterpillar, and SPG. We kind of went over it over here in the activity tab. 
So that's where I made my first $21.70. It felt pretty good to have positions in the market that are paying you in inside of a tax-free account, just kind of knowing that in the future, as this portfolio builds, that it will generate over X amount of dollars, just completely tax-free. And what I had initially done here, this is a spreadsheet that I created. I was trying to predict how much dividends I would make on a yearly basis. So here's back in 2018 with my $5,500 deposit, I estimated that with the initial deposit of $5,500 with an average yield of around 3.22%, I would make that $177.10 of dividends. That $177 of dividends with its own yield of the portfolio, you know, these dividends are getting paid out, but they're being reinvested back into the portfolio would generate roughly $5.70. So the total there would be 182. And this is just kind of a weird way that I kind of made the math of kind of as I was trying to estimate, you know, trying to predict where my dividends would sit. So after 2018, I tried to predict where it would sit and it was at $194.39. So if I go to here to the December 2018, I had made in my first year of dividends, my total dividends that were paid out for that year was $188.49. So the data that I had, $188.49, I was fairly close. I was off by maybe a few dollars there of the total dividend income. Then I kind of projected out how much, you know, how many, you know, how much dividends I would make during this process. So here we were in 2019. By the end of 2019, I was predicting that total, we would be hitting roughly $426.64. So now if I go to the end of 2019 here in December, the total dividends that were paid out was actually $736.32. So quite a bit different there than I had initially planned and had gone for. So I was expecting roughly $426. We were actually at 700. So we had actually exceeded our, our 2020. And even now, just a few months, if we just look at these recent few months, I really haven't dumped a whole lot of equity in the recent months. So at the very end of December, we were at $736.32. We were making $54 in dividends every month. So that those dividends are getting paid out into the account reinvested back in January. Well, here, I'll show you, I'll show you another little thing here. Actually, we can see it here. So the total dividends that have been paid out, 736, the portfolio is now generating 721. Then we go to January of 2020. The portfolio went from generating 721 to now generating 754. Our total dividends that we were paid out so far were 790. And then this, I did it update it right there. I can see I messed up a little bit there. Uh, our dividend income in February, very end of February, went from 754 to 755. And then recently, where we are currently sitting at, it went from 775 to now 798. And the month isn't over. You know, right now we are on the 20th of March, 2020. I still have next week on the 23rd, and I have the 30th of March in order to invest equity. That's two more deposits and that'll push my dividend income going forward from the end of this month over $800. And throughout the rest of the year, I do believe that our dividend income will possibly break $1,000 depending on how long this downturn takes. My dividends that are getting paid out here, last month they paid me $71.26. The month before, 52.96. The month before, 54.36. And this month so far, we've generated $50.13. So we're making anywhere from 50 to uh, $70 of just straight dividends every single month. And here, I kind of went back, and this is our total dividend. So I was trying to predict it here, and that just went through today prior to making this video to kind of show the progression of this portfolio. Now, in the early in my first year of M1 Finance, it was pretty, I, I deposited my $5,500 and the market in February tanked a little bit. So I kind of held off just a little bit. It wasn't too much of a tank where I really wanted to dump a lot of equity. It wasn't until October, November timeframe in 2018 where the market really took a dip. And my portfolio, I don't believe it will kind of show this 
Let's see if we can go and look here. It, it's not a really easy way of seeing it right now, but during this time frame, after August of 2018, the market really started to tank, and that's when you kind of see the portfolio kind of beefing up as far as equity. That's because I used that portion there after August when the market started falling to just throw the rest of the equity that I had sitting on the side into the portfolio in order to max it out for 2018. So that's why the portfolio kind of rose up quite a bit with equity. And that's why you notice that there's a big spike here between the end of the months here. September, October, November is pretty flat. That's because these positions had already kind of gone through exhibiting date. And the new equity that was kind of pushing into the market hadn't really settled and sat through exhibiting dates. So after those positions started kind of sitting through exhibiting dates here in November, December, and October, January started. Uh, January is where we started to kind of see the effect of the equity that we added towards the end of the year. So our dividends went from being an average of twenty, nineteen, fifteen dollars a month. They went to I don't know. Okay, that's right. Okay, so thirty-eight dollars. I was looking at this bar right here. It doesn't seem like thirty-eight dollars, but here, after this equity was pushed into the market during these downturns of October, November, December of twenty eighteen. You could really see the performance kind of pick up in January, February, March. I went from making uh, about $20, $20, to $30 a month, $33 a month, $36 a month. And then that's when I started to kind of stick to my schedule of $115.38 every month into the market for 2019. So here's where you can kind of see a steady increase month after month, month after month with these that's weird here in October. I don't know if this is correct. I don't know how I could have fallen in October to 40.58. I think it's just kind of my, maybe I didn't track it. So let's see here, 40.58. So those are the dividends that were paid out. So maybe I may not be tracking something or maybe I kind of just goofed my calculations, maybe not tracking something completely, but kind of a weird month there. You can see all these other months there, or maybe that's correct. Because July is a 7, so 2, 5, I have to put these here in place, whoops, well that kind of changed this quite a bit, ah, I'm not going to do that, oh I have them, I have them color coded, I'm silly, <laughs> I goofed that up, okay, so here, they're color coded, so it makes sense, so $38, so anything um, so you know how you have your positions in the stock market where they pay out quarterly. So you have your one, four, seven, and 10 months. You have your two, five, eight, and 11 months. You have your three, six, nine, and 12 months. So here we can see in January, I made 38. The next quarter I made $40 and 11 cents. The next quarter I went back, maybe I sold a position. So I made 39.66. Then I went back up 40.58, then 52.96. Here in the Blue is our two, six, nine, eleven months. So it went thirty-three to thirty-seven to fifty-five to sixty-six to seventy-one. That's a much faster explosion there. So I've been the positions that I've been buying have been kind of focused, it looks like, into the months of February, May, August, and November. And then here our third set, our third quarterly, um, like our three, six, nine, and 12 months, we went from 36 to 48 to 57 to 54. So maybe I sold, yeah, it looks like I probably sold something there that affected there. But then here, 55 to now March at 50, 13. And this month isn't over yet. So December, it was at 54, 36. I still have another week and a half of dividends that are going to get paid out. So I'm sure I'll probably sit right around 56, $57 of dividends here at the very end of March. So that's kind of been the progression of these portfolio of this account and throughout the the year here since the inception of this account back in January of 2018 up until now I ho I hope this was actually zoomed in enough for everyone on the mobile devices I just kind of forgot about it now until I'm just kind of thinking about it that I really hadn't zoomed in so I started the account, zero dollars, my first investment, and then it started to kind of come in. I started adding more equity here in November, December, October, November, December, as the market was falling at the end of 2018, and the portfolio really grew. Here, I haven't stuck to it really investing a whole lot of equity in the account. I can actually fund this account. 
So while everyone's kind of been throwing money into their accounts during this bottoming out period, I can still invest $4,730.82 into this portfolio to kind of buy it back up, buy these positions up. So I am actually looking at doing that. I may drop a thousand or two thousand dollars into this account and kind of buy it where it's at right now in in intervals. So I'll probably pick up instead of depositing one fifteen thirty five, I may put in five hundred dollars on a weekly basis here during this downturn or something along those lines. I'm still not a hundred percent sure of what I want to do, but I definitely want to see the dividends compound and build fast during this time frame. So it could be another double increase here. I could go from making $20 to making 30 here to making 50 to $70 here to making 100 to $140 if I just sort of position myself really well here into certain positions. So that's really been the whole process and journey of this portfolio. It's been a nice, um, you know, that's what I wanted to focus on. I don't really want to focus on the equity because I'm not going to get that. You know, I'm not going to sell out of the positions. I did my research. I believe in the companies that I am currently holding. There are a few positions in the portfolio that I've been kind of looking at potentially thinning out, such as, you know, I can let you know here what I've been kind of looking at. I just recently went through here, re-updated the payout ratios, re-updated the dividend growth of these por uh, of the positions, and... There are a few positions that are actually not applicable, such as CVS and General Mills. These are two companies that have not increased their dividend in quite a while, so they're kind of just stagnant in the account. They are actually pretty positive, so I've been considering selling out of CVS, uh, CVS Health Corp. So I'll kind of show you an example. I know this is kind of going into extra portion of the video. Uh, so if you're, if you're not interested in kind of seeing why I want to get rid of these, you guys can definitely wrap it up. You know, I do thank you for watching this video. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, all that fun jazz. But if you want to hang out here, we can take a look at these positions. While they are positive in the portfolio, I may actually sell out of them here in the future and move that equity into other positions that I feel are better fit. So CVS Health Corporation, I think it's a great position. It was, you know, I think it was a great initial investment, but it really has been stagnant here recently from... Looks like maybe January, February of 2017. It really hasn't increased its dividend. I bought it initially because I believe it was beat down here in the short term. It's actually been going through this whole process lately really well. And General Mills has actually done really well as well. It may be down 7.05 today. But overall, it's still up a nice 35.26%. It doesn't have a whole lot of equity. It has $369 of it, but maybe I could move that money elsewhere into like Main Street Capital or Realty Income or some other positions which will generate me more dividend yield, but also buy me into a company that has a longer standing history of growing and paying out dividends, such as some of these other ones. My my longest growing paying out dividends, General, uh, Genuine Parts Co., 3M, Lowe's, Lancaster, Johnson & Johnson, Stanley Black & Decker, and so on. So I do have a few other ones down here towards the bottom. I don't think Apple is very risky. Las Vegas Sands could potentially be risky with cutting their dividend and then so on. But that is all I wanted to cover in this video. So I'm not too focused on the equity right now. I've just been focused on the dividend performance over these past two years and really seeing you know, what we started off to create inside of the account kind of blooming. And eventually, you know, just think of this portfolio down the line here on its third year, we went from getting paid anywhere from twenty dollars to fifteen, you know, fifteen to twenty dollars to getting paid somewhere around forty to sixty dollars to now we're making fifty to seventy dollars. Maybe in this next year, this portfolio will be generating a hundred to $150 of just dividend income in the next year, it's gonna go $200. So my whole process here of predicting the dividend income is actually gonna be much, much different. And we may see this number here of where we're generating $12,000 a month. Uh, maybe that's on a, is that yearly? It is yearly. So it's yearly, but it's still $1,000 a month at, uh, at age 60 
when I plan to retire or at least pull out tax-free income from this account. So I'll have to kind of rework my numbers to kind of see how and what I can kind of tweak to kind of make this predictable, uh, maybe make it a little bit easier to kind of see where I'm going to be hitting at. And that is going to be it for today's video. So that is it. If you guys did enjoy this video, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Uh, I know it was kind of rambling here and there, but I wanted to kind of focus on the whole journey of the dividend portfolio. I think a lot of dividend investors kind of lose focus and maybe they're not looking at their dividends that are building up. They're building by uh, they're buying back more shares. They're increasing their total share count. That's what you kind of want to focus on. As long as you're holding very strong company, you know, you're holding strong companies, they're not going to be cutting their dividend. There are lots of companies out there who are cutting their dividend, but they're very high risk companies. So you don't want to buy the company for that high yield. You want to buy the company for the company itself, their financial metrics, their longstanding history, the services and uh, the services and products that they provide and how those products and services are needed. So that is going to basically be it for today's video. Thank you all for tuning in. Remember to subscribe, drop me a comment, and give this video a thumbs up. Bye-bye.